the Mariners are in first place. My final Seahawks prediction, and we kick somebody off of Goat Mountain. Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Sports Show. I'm your host, Mikey. And today, our main topic is the Mariners. And the Mariners have to be our number one main topic today because of the amazing August they have been having. I'm going to pull it up on the screen right here if you're watching on YouTube right now. That's right. Here is the standings. We're not just fighting for that wild card spot anymore. No, we are are tied for first place in the American League West. That's right. We have continued our winning ways uh, while the teams around us uh, mostly lose. Uh, Texas and Houston both won today as well, keeping us uh, all in the same position where we were. But if you look at the last 10, Seattle 9 and 1, Texas 2 and 8, Houston 4 and 6. Yes, we are on the rise. All the teams who you've been hearing me say all along aren't that much better than the Mariners and they should come back down to earth. And if the Mariners start playing like you know, just the just what we just what they're you know, baseball cards say they should be, then they would start catching up. Well, they've been playing the baseball card plus. I mean, come on. I mean, we all know how Julio has been on a tear. Um, you know, the the seawall trade worked out for us uh, on the field. I will say that uh, Rojas and uh, Canzone have been doing good. Okay? I I will say this, though. A lot of people, I see you out there saying, oh, well, uh, you know, and a lot of you who are out there saying like, oh, this team is horrible. We need to make big trades at the deadline. Uh, you got to fire Jerry DePoto, blah, blah, blah. You know, a lot of you who are saying that kind of stuff uh, and, and and talking about how the Seawall trade uh, was bad are now going, oh, yeah, well, you know, these players wouldn't even be on the team if it wasn't for that seawall trade. Uh, you got to give them credit. Like, well, hold on, hold on. Let's, you know, let's not waver back and forth that much. Let's be honest. Let's be truthful. What's going on here? Okay, what happened was Jerry DePoto, he still did. You still have to look at that as a mistake. The way... Munoz and Brash have been coming in at the end of the games. It stresses me out every game. Even though we've won most of our games, they are giving up so many runs and just not having the command that you want your closers to be having that it is stressful. And the, the couple of games that we've lost, uh, you know, we, we've only lost like, I don't know, what, three games in the last 20 or something like that. But it, it it's you can point <laughs> to, uh, you know, Munoz and Brash uh, giving up runs and losing us games in uh, in the final inning. And that's because Jerry DePoto made such big mistakes in the offseason that you couldn't just, you know, get rid of, you know, you, you didn't have to just trade... Uh, you know, a piece for another piece. You had to trade a big piece uh, to get uh, other pieces back. It would have been better <laughs> if uh, we still had 
was Seawald on this team, and it w- wasn't somebody we had to trade. I don't know what a, a you know a different trade would have looked like, uh, but it shouldn't have been that you could literally get nothing for AJ Pollock and Colton Wong, uh, and have to, uh, you know, so you're dropping those players and then trading, uh, one of your, your best players, uh, to get some players that we had no guarantee or clue if these guys were going to work out. I'm loving the way they've been playing for us lately, but let's be honest. Let's be truthful. Uh, that was still a big mistake by Jerry DePoto. And, you know, I'm somebody here, you've heard me say that I'm not calling for anybody's job. I think they, uh, you know, going into the season, it looked like they made the right decisions. Well, those ones were catastrophic, right? Uh, To the point where you had to trade your best closer. So, so that's that's the honest truth. So we we, we can't uh, just say uh, when we're hating something that it's the worst, but then all of a sudden when uh, it works out that uh, well, it's the best thing they ever did. You got you got to be the truthful about it. What happened was they made huge mistakes <laughs> uh, to start the season, uh, and they lucked into uh, a good move here at the trade deadline. Uh, and you know, like I said, I'm not saying that I'm not glad that these new guys are here. I'm glad they're here because they've been, uh, uh, doing great for us. I just wish they were here while Seawald was still here. Uh, but let's get back to the, the praise of the Mariners right now. I mean, just how amazing they're doing. Everybody is on fire for how cold we wanted uh, or I mean, for how cold all our stars were that we expected to be good all season long, they have, uh, you know, come back three times <laughs> of what they were doing at the beginning of the season to make up for it. You know, because who did we need to be good this season? We needed Julio to be good. We needed Oscar to be good. We needed Suarez to be good. We need uh, Raleigh to be good. We need France to be good. The, these, this was kind of your your core players, Right, those are like five of your core. Kellenic will put him in there too. We weren't sure if he was going to be good, but he was doing really good there for a while. And sounds like he's going to be back here in the next week or two. Okay, but anyways, that that that's your core guys, and your core was so cold at the beginning of the season. Um, but like I said, they ramped it up three three times the amount of what they were doing, and uh, we needed it because just a month ago we were ten games back. Now we are tied for the lead of the division. Okay. And I'm watching Texas. I'm watching Houston. They do not look like teams that are scrapping and fighting to win a division. They look like they are crumbling. Okay. I mean, it's baseball. So you never know what's going to happen this last uh, five weeks here. Right. I mean, it, it could turn out. Still, it, it, it still could turn out that the the Mariners do not make the playoffs because that's that's baseball, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, it, just watching the way people are playing right now, it's looking like we should be in the playoffs. And I mean, let, let's take a look at the 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 wild cards here, the standings here. I mean, um, I guess. Um, you know, Texas and Houston, one, yeah, I mean, like I said, one or both of them could be out of the playoffs by the time uh, the season is over, especially with the way they're playing, you know? So uh, we'll, we'll, we will see. But it's just been really exciting. I mean, we can, uh, you know, let's go ahead give the, the little uh, recap of what's been uh, happening since our last episode. Um, what did we uh, do here? I mean, we had a win against Chicago, 14 to, uh, 14 to 2. That was a game where Luis Castillo threw 47 straight fastballs against the White Sox. And yeah, we just saw how bad that White Sox team is. A lot of home runs in that game. Um, we had a 
the next game we won against the White Sox uh, with Brian Wu making his return. Uh, I know he didn't make it long, but just good to see him back in there. Um, we won that game six to three, and then the final game there we lost to Chicago five to four with Kirby on the mound. So a shame that we uh, weren't able to get it uh, done with Kirby on the mound, and um, you know he didn't have his best outing wasn't horrible it wouldn't have its best outing though but uh yeah uh it was a uh, not the greatest way to uh close out the road trip there but again we went on a road trip where we went uh what eight and two on that road trip just we only lost the first game to kansas city and then lost the last game on the road trip to uh chicago yeah not the greatest teams but to go on the road eight and two yeah it's pretty amazing then we come home, get a win against Kansas City, 7-5. Bryce Miller on the mound. Uh, again, seeing players, J.B. Crawford, Cal Raleigh, uh, Eugenio, Teoscar, uh, Rojas, <laughs> you know, all uh, putting, putting it together and getting it done for this team. Then, oh my goodness, today, oh, win against Kansas City, 5th. Team to two, Logan Gilbert on the mound being dominant like he is. You know, he brought his uh, persona Walter out today and got the job done, uh, only giving up one run in seven innings. Uh, and then just the Mariners, I mean, they put on some sort of persona today as well. Uh, the 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 batters, I mean, we had Josh Rojas hit a homer. Teoscar hit a grand slam. My forward hit a two-run homer. And that was all just in the third inning. <laughs> Then uh, Teoscar gets an RBI uh, single in the fifth. JP came up, got an RBI in the fifth. Julio, he comes up and hits a homer in the fifth. Now he is the fastest Mariner to 50 home runs uh, ever. Uh, did it in just 256 games. I believe that's like, what, 13 games faster than what Alex Rodriguez did. And then the thing, other thing we got to mention, Julio, 50 home runs, 50 steals deals within his first two seasons in the majors the only other player to do that is ronald lacuna jr so what amazing time to be living in right and what an amazing time uh just not as a baseball fan to be watching this going on but uh specifically as a mariner fan to have julio on your team and getting to watch him do this uh every game uh you know he's up to 35 steals just the year, this year alone uh, and there's still five weeks left, so we'll, we'll see how many steals he ends up with. And it's just, it's amazing, uh, to see him hitting for power, uh, stealing bags with ease. It's just, it's been amazing. Uh, what, uh, Cal Raleigh had a homer in the sixth. Cade Marlowe had a homer in the seventh. Teoscar came up and hit a homer in the eighth. We won this game 15 to two. Uh, there was what, seven or eight homers. <laughs> in total in this game it was just it was ridiculous um i'm actually going uh to the game uh on sunday against kansas city so i'm hoping they didn't waste all their homers <laughs> on the saturday game because i'm taking my kids uh, on the sunday game so I, i'm hoping they uh hit some homers for us as well should be fun um yeah this this um mariners team it's it's amazing it's fun to watch uh you uh you got to be tuning if you if you haven't been watching if you're one of the people uh who've been uh you know saying to me that oh this team's not that good you know in the first 100 games i mean it even got to me uh, you you heard it here on this podcast when they were 50 and 50 I got frustrated myself i was like okay i guess that's what this team is i guess they're just 50 and 50 this year they're you're not, not proving that they can do anything better. Uh, but at the same time, they've never went on a losing streak more than four games. Never went on a winning streak uh, for more than four games there for a while. But already twice in August, they went on two eight-game winning streaks. Okay? So <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Uh, and they're back to where we expected this team to be. Uh you know, like I said, I thought for sure they were a wild card team uh, with the potential to compete for the division. And here they are, uh, the last portion of the season, 
last five weeks. They are exactly where uh, I thought they would be before the season started. Definitely a wild card team, and here they are, top of the division, fighting for that division lead. We'll see what happens in the last five weeks. Just so much fun. All right, there is your Mariners. Uh, you got to tune in. Uh, every game is exciting now. You know, the, it, like I said, the, baseball is a long season. Uh, so you got to be a real baseball fan to watch every game all season long. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you're just a casual fan um, of the Mariners, now is the time to tune in because we're in the last five weeks. And, you know, this is where it starts to feel, um, we'll bring, we'll mention football here. This is where it kind of starts to feel like football, right? Where like every single game matters because, uh, you know, a win or a win here or a loss there uh, can make a big difference uh, in the way the standings shake out here at the end of the season. And since I mentioned football here, let's talk uh, our next topic, which will be the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> All right, and the Seahawks have a lot going on too. Uh, unfortunately, Jackson Smith and Jigba, uh, that that uh, play last week in the uh, preseason game, he got tackled, jammed his wrist into the turf, broke a bone in the wrist. Uh, nothing major. Uh, went and got surgery. Uh, Pete. Sounds optimistic that he's going to be ready by week one. Uh, again, this is a, they're saying, you know, three to four week uh, type of injury. And, you know, at the time of this injury happened, we were like three and a half weeks away from uh, the first game. So it is very likely uh, that he could be ready to go week one still. I, I heard people like suggesting, oh, well, you know, it, it, uh, he, he might miss the first four games uh, because the, the pre, uh, our, our bye week is in week five, so then he could be come back right after that. No, look, uh, Tyler Lockett last year broke a bone in his hand, only missed one game, okay? Uh, JSN... I will say he was back uh, with the team today. He's wearing uh, a wrist brace. That that's it. He's it's going to be fine. It's, it wasn't a major break. Uh, my oldest son, uh, same type of deal. A couple of years ago, he fell down, uh, tried to catch himself, right, and uh, uh, broke a you know is again a, just like a hairline fracture in the wrist. Uh, and uh, he didn't even get surgery, right? They just, they didn't, like, I broke my wrist wrestling uh, uh, when I was on the wrestling team growing up. I had to, like, go to the hospital, get my wrist set back in place, and wear a cast, uh, uh, you know, around my wrist for, like, six weeks. You know, my son, uh, you know, again, just a hairline fracture. They had him put a, a brace around his wrist, and he wore it for four weeks. Uh, I'm not worried about JSN <laughs> missing an extensive amount of time. Uh, I'm not. I'm not here to try to uh, scare you into thinking that. Oh well, he might miss the first four games because you might as well, uh, you know, rest him. No, he's. It's. It's not a major break. Uh, he, he's going to be just fine. Uh, if he misses week one, I won't be uh, totally surprised. Uh, if he's there week one, I won't be totally surprised by that either. Uh, so. Just know, yeah, he got hurt, but he's, you know, we we, sec we, we expect to see him uh, sooner rather than later. Um, Jamal Adams has been activated from the physically unable to perform list. He's going to be joining the team, and I am excited about that because uh, what he can bring to the table for this team in the scheme that they are running is going to be major in helping this team stop the run game. And we saw how bad that was last year. And uh, I'm excited to see him hopefully get back to old form and setting uh, defensive back records again for most sacks in a season, right? That we would love to see that. 
Okay, so there's there's a couple of news items. And then uh, today, uh, the day that I'm recording this, Saturday the 26th, uh, we had our preseason game week three against Green Bay Packers uh, in which we lost 19-15. No big deal, right? It's preseason. Uh, Green Bay Packers had their first team out there. We had our second team out there most of the game. We had third stringers. We had guys out on the field that are not going to make the team. So uh, the fact that Green Bay's ones uh, didn't look that great against our twos and threes uh, and people who will end up not making the team should make you feel pretty darn good because uh we were it, it just shows you when we're going against like a mediocre team that uh we can get the job done uh you know it, i imagine if our ones were in there it would have been we would have trounced them <laughs> right <laughs> um but here's the things that you that uh, you need to know uh, or that you should take away from today's game. Drew Locke is for real. He is our solid backup quarterback. When Drew uh when uh Geno Smith said that he was glad that um Drew Locke was still here because he's a good quarterback, but that it was bittersweet because he feels, you know, like he should be a starter uh, somewhere on a team because he's that good. Um, I'm not going to say I'm willing to go that far, but Drew Locke looks solid. And he looks like a guy that, again, uh, if Geno did get hurt and he had to come in and play for four games, you would be confident that he could get you to two and two. And that's what you want the backup to do, right? Is to, that's what you hope the backup is good enough to do, is to make it so that you don't lose any ground. Uh, the other thing is Jake uh, Bobo belongs on this team. Belongs on this team. I cannot believe there were still people during the game today that were saying uh, maybe Bobo has done enough to uh, make this team, but you know, he only ran a 4-9 at the Combine, so we'll have to see if he's really going to make the team. We're going to have to see. Use your eyes. See with your eyes what he's doing on the field. He is <laughs> he is doing uh, things on the field that you want a player on your team to do. Okay, he's obviously not going to be starting over DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, or Jackson Smith and Jigba. We're not saying that. But yes, this is your, this is this team's uh, Jermaine Curse, okay? Yeah, he's not the most dynamic receiver on the team, but he's a guy, look at him getting open, okay? Again, I will bring up Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice, 4-7 at the Combine, all right? It's not your, your wide receivers, any position doesn't have to be running 4-3. You have to have knowledge of the football game itself you have to know how to get open i don't care if you can run four three okay that that's if you're running in a straight line and nobody's touching you nobody nobody's trying to get in your way okay on the football field people are trying to get in your way you have to uh fake people out you have to run around people you have to run through people that's how football is played and bobo watch him run his routes he knows uh you know for a guy who's only running four nine at the combine he's sure making looking people look silly running you know three four five yards behind him because they were fooled on the route he was running the guy belongs to the team he's going to make the team uh especially uh we know Derek young is injured uh d eskridge suspended for six games uh you know sure there's some other players uh on the roster that they look like they could be on the team too but they're not doing the things that bobo are doing so or bobo is doing so you know you're not gonna you're not gonna drop bobo uh for somebody who hasn't proven <laughs> to to be able to do anything uh, and uh, with that being said, let me give my final prediction. 
for the Seahawks going into the season. I still predict that this team is going to be a 12-win team, 12-5, and five, and I am going to say that is good enough to win this division. Again, just, just a little bit. I'm not saying I'm watching the entire game. Okay, but I'm watching the other teams in our division. I'm watching the Cardinals. I mean, they're, I, I, they'll be lucky to win a game, right? I'm watching the Rams. Uh, you know, they have a lot of talent there still. They are aging, but there's a lot of talent there still. So, you know, they might be, you know, they might be a decent team. They could be, you know, a game or two under 500, or they might even get to 500. I don't know. Uh, the, again, 49ers. Yeah, a lot of talent on the team. They look good. They don't look like a team that is uh, poised and ready to win this division and be competing for a Super Bowl. Okay, I mean, you know, it's it's the it's the same thing every year. The 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 Cowboys and the Forty ers Everybody likes to predict them every year to win the Super Bowl. It and it doesn't happen. When was the last time either of these teams won the Super Bowl? Twenty, thirty years. It's ridiculous. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I'm not feeling confident about the 49ers. They just traded Trey Lance. Okay. That's the worst draft pick and worst trade ever in the history of the NFL. Uh, and that's to have Mr. Irrelevant be your starting quarterback, uh, as good as he looked last year. Uh, and again, he didn't that look that good. The team had good results. He looks like he's got such a weak arm. Um, and teams have had time to uh adjust to him uh watch film on him and know how to defend against him now okay he's not gonna be surprising anybody this year so i don't expect them uh to have the same success uh as they had last year so this team is going to win the division uh you know the other thing i've been talking about is like you know i'm not sure i i've been saying that i'm not sure if this team is good enough to win a Super Bowl that it almost feels kind of like the 2012 year uh, where maybe they're just a year off. Eh, scratch that. This team is good enough to win a Super Bowl. I believe this team can win a Super Bowl. I'm not saying that they will, but uh, I just, I don't, I don't have that same feeling anymore where it was like, uh, they still might be a year off. I'm watching the team now. I'm saying, no, this team is poised and ready to win a Super Bowl this year, next year, uh, and the year after. Sometime in this three-year window, it could be any time, this team looks ready to win a Super Bowl right now. So that's my prediction on the Seahawks. And with Jamal Adams being back, uh, again, that didn't change my prediction at all uh, for how many games we're going to win. Uh, I wasn't sure if Jamal Adams was going to be back or not, or when he was going to be back. Uh, looks like he's going to be back uh very soon and i think that's just going to help some of those wins look even more dominating than they would have been uh, but it is the nfl games are hard to win so still 12 and 5 prediction all right there you go there's your seattle seahawks uh let's see what other news do we have to bring today okay we got the mariners already they were the main topic uh let's talk a, a little uh, a little storm here. And uh, the storm, uh, since our last episode, have continued their losing ways. They lost to Chicago Sky, 102 to 79. They lost to Indiana, 90 to 86. Um, you know, and... Uh, it's the same thing that it's been all season. No defense, no team defense, uh, lack of rebounding, and turnovers. It's just been a problem all season long. Uh, Jewel Lloyd, she's been a problem for the rest of the league uh, all season long, and that has continued. Um, you know, it's just it's a shame that uh, she's putting on these type of performances and just the team as a whole is so bad. Uh, she set a storm single season uh, scoring record and now has 780 uh, points total on the season. Um, 
she's, uh, you know, looking like she's going to set a uh, points per game record. Uh, she's she's just doing amazing things. And I had not even thought of it, but they mentioned it on the last game on commentary that, oh, well, you know, in 2024, Jewel Lloyd is going to be a uh, free agent. So uh, we'll have to see what she decides to do. Uh, and and Seattle is obviously going to have a high pick. Well, hey, whoa, slow down. Don't eat. That thought had never even really crossed my mind. I mean, to me, obviously, the Storm are going to do whatever they need to do to make Joel Lloyd happy and want to stay, right? And with a high draft pick coming, we should be getting a, another solid player to join this team that uh, should hopefully help out. And I, as I said, even though this team's record is not good, uh, I, again, they are 10 and 24 with six games left to go, they could end up 10 and 30. They might not win another game. Uh, but, you know, this, you see the potential that so many of these young rookies have on the team. Uh, sprinkle in a couple of uh, veterans there, uh, get a top draft pick, and you know you're 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 on your you're on your way to being successful again again look at the history of uh the storm lauren jackson one year sue bird the next year championships uh brianna uh or jewel lloyd one year brianna stewart another year championships okay <laughs> That's, uh, you know, we, we, those, those are all number one picks. Uh, you know, it doesn't look like the, our next year's uh, pick is going to be a number one pick, but it's going to be a high pick. So it's going to be somebody really good. Again, uh, big a potential that there's a lot of big names coming out of college this year as well. So, you know, please, please do everything you can to keep Jewel Lloyd, uh, with the storm. All right, there's the storm. Uh, the other thing we got we got to mention some OL rain, right? Uh, the news that we got uh, out of the rain was that they extended Olivia Vanderjat uh, through the 2026 season. So that is great news. Uh, great player great to see her here for a few more years uh and really that's all the news that we have out of there uh you know uh again i'm recording this on saturday night i'm going to the uh, mariners game on sunday so you know the sounders the rain um obviously the mariners will too they're all they're all having games uh but I want to record now because I got a busy day on Sunday. I'm going to a Mariners game. I have my fantasy uh, draft with my coworkers on Sunday night. So I didn't think I'd have time to record uh, on Sunday. Oh, and that, you know, m mentioning that uh, before we get to our main topic, because we've covered everybody now, uh, you know, the Kraken still off season, super slow uh, off season, nothing uh, happening right now sounders didn't have a game since the last episode uh the sea dragons again uh super slow uh, off-season stuff i mean you saw ben dinucci uh playing in preseason though uh you know former uh sea dragons uh quarterback now quarterback for denver broncos could uh end up being you never know uh, he could end up being a starter at some point for uh the broncos uh during the season this season but um, before we get to, uh, not the main topic, but, uh, you know, the, uh, special discussion that I want to go over in this episode, uh, let me mention again, because we still have a week and a half left before the season starts. Uh, I would love, love, love to do another fantasy football league. I got ones that I do with friends. I, uh, got one that I'm doing with coworkers, which is a huge league this year. It's uh, uh, first time I'm ever going to be in a league this big, but they we we added some players uh, this year, so we're going to have a 16 team league at my work fantasy league. But I would love to do a third fantasy league for listeners of this show because I just think it would be fun because that's what this show is about. It's about our fandom of Seattle sports teams. Uh, and I would love to get 
uh, you know, a, a group together for, uh, you know, Seahawks fans just to, uh, you know, it'll just be for fun, for bragging rights. Uh, you know, it is whoever the winner was, I would definitely let them come on the show as a guest and, and, and brag. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think it would be really fun. Uh, you know, I, I put out a little, uh, announcement for it. Didn't really get any response. And I, I get that, uh, this podcast is still new, it takes time to build stuff up. I mean, uh, my, my Fortnite uh, community that I have, you know, I have thousands of people listening to that and it took a couple years just to get a couple of hundred people in, uh, uh, the discord community that we have over there. So, uh, I get if you guys are are shy and uh, whatnot, but I don't know. Maybe you're already in the fantasy league as well, and maybe your draft didn't go so well. Maybe you want another shot, uh, and you, you're like me. You like to have multiple uh, fantasy teams. So, again, reach out to me at seattlesportsshow at gmail.com. Let me know if you'd be interested in doing a fantasy football league, uh, and hopefully we'll get enough of a response that uh, sometime... Uh, by next weekend, we could do a draft, uh, you know, and again, if you're somebody who uh, just had bad luck in <laughs> a, a draft that you're doing, you sure would love to have another shot, wouldn't you? All right, there you go. There's that little uh, idea there. Uh, now, let's get to uh, this uh, discussion that I'd like to have today about GOAT mountain the sporting news wrote this article uh and they did it for a bunch of different cities i think there was like 13 different cities in total that they did it for but they did the goat mountain uh for those cities and uh they would put on so like mount rushmore they pick four players across all the different sports so i think they chose 13 cities because there were 13 cities that had like all of the major sports in them at some point during their history and uh, so they chose the four players that should be on uh, the Mount Rushmore, the ghosts of that city. And here's who they chose for Seattle. Ken Griffey Jr., Ichiro Suzuki, Russell Wilson, and Sue Bird. One of these does not belong uh, we're kicking somebody off the mountain and replacing them. Uh, before we uh, say who we're kicking off, let's go over uh, exactly what got these people on the mountain according to, sp in court according to the Sporting News. This is what earned them their spots just based off of statistics they they wrote a whole article you can go read the whole thing it takes like a 15 it's like a 15 minute read so they try to give their explanations for each person but um here's kind of the gist of the players that they chose ken griffey jr hall of fame he was an mvp he was a 13 time all-star won the home run derby three times he won a gold glove 10 times. He is a seven-time silver slugger. Um, he was an all-star MVP, and he was the Major League Player of the Year. Pretty amazing stuff, right? I mean, and then, you know, just uh, career, 83.8 war, uh, had 2,781 hits, 630 home runs, a 284 batting average, um, eight 1,836 uh, runs batted in, 184 stolen bases. Just, just great player, right? Obviously, obviously, <laughs> uh, one of the greatest of all time. Not just of Seattle, but just one of the greats of all time of baseball. Uh, maybe that there tells you that's not the guy that I'm kicking off of <laughs> of Goat Mountain, but nobody would have thought that would be the one anyways. Let's get to our next, which is Ichiro Suzuki. Let's go over the gist. MVP, Rookie of the Year, 10-time All-Star, 10-time Gold Glove winner, 3-time Silver Slugger, 2-times 
batting t- uh, had the batting title and the All Star MVP as well. Look, his, let's look at his major league career. Uh, he had a 60 WAR, 3,089 hits, uh, 117 home runs, a 311 batting average, 780 RBIs, 509 stolen bases. Amazing. Uh, I love watching Ichiro Suzuki. Uh, I, I have a jersey. Um, uh, uh, great player, right? Uh, what what more can you say about him? I mean, the the only knock people ever had uh, against Ichiro was that, um, you know, that he could speak English, uh, but he uh rarely chose to speak English or you know talk to the media. That, that was always the biggest knock against him. Let's get to their next GOAT, uh, according to the Sporting News. And that is Russell Wilson. Let's go over, uh, you know, the, the, the overview here. Nine-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champion, 2020 Walter Payton Award winner. For his career, um... Uh, 40,583 yards of uh, 7.8 yards per attempt, 308 TDs, just 98 interceptions, um, a 64.6 completion percentage for his career. Those are great, great numbers. All right. So, and a great accomplishments, right? Uh, what, what else can you say? Uh, about Russell Wilson. Now, let's get to Sue Bird. All right, here's Sue Bird's list of accomplishments. Sue Bird is a four time WNBA champion, five time Olympic gold medalist, four time world champion gold medalist. She's on the WNBA All-Decade Team. She was the 2002 Sportswoman of the Year. She's the first WNBA player with 3,000 assists, 3, assists, just the second player to make 1,000 three-pointers. She is a three-time WNBA Sportsmanship Award winner, three-time WNBA Assist Leader, three-time All-WNBA Second Team, five-time All-WNBA First Team, she has a WNBA record 13-time All-Star appearances, and she played and started in a record-setting 580 games. Never came off the bench in any game she ever played. 580 games played, 580 games started. That is a list of accomplishments, and that is your list of goats according to the Sporting News. Now... After everything I just read to you and accomplishments of all these players, who do you think I'm kicking off of Goat Mountain? Who are you kicking off of Goat Mountain after hearing those? I'm kicking off Russell Wilson. As great as he was, I mean, just listen to the list of accomplishments compared to the to the other players. Nine-time Pro Bowler, a Super Bowl champion, and a Walter Payton Award winner. Uh, th- that's not anywhere near as long a list as any of the others, right? That's uh, great that you were in the Pro Bowl nine times. Uh, great that you were a Super Bowl champion. Uh, he never even had a single vote for MVP. There were years where five players uh, got votes for MVP during the years that Russell Wilson was playing. And he didn't get a single one of them in any of those years. Uh, you know, he did not make any all pro teams. There has been. Obviously, throughout the 2010s, 
there was an all-decade team that has been named. Russell Wilson not named to any of those. Okay? So we got to kick Russell Wilson off of the mountain. There's players in Seattle that played just as long in Seattle or longer in Seattle that have a longer list of accomplishments that fit Seattle personality much more and should go on the mountain in place of Russell Wilson. Uh, you know, uh, if you do go read that article, their kind of argument basically is, well, he was the quarterback of the Super Bowl winning team. Well, again, I, that's just, I, if you're telling me that they're the GOAT, you have to give me more than that, okay? Trent Dilfer was <laughs> a quarterback for a Super Bowl winning team. If you go to that city, do you think they're going to put Trent Dilfer uh, as somebody that they would list as the GOAT uh, athlete in their city? I, I don't think so. That you ha I get that quarterback is the most important position on any team sport, but you can't that doesn't automatically qualify them <laughs> to, uh, to be uh to be considered uh the absolute goat okay so let's look at some potential replacements uh again and just quickly going over the overviews uh a list of accomplishments for these uh players edgar martinez hall of fame First baseball player that went into the Hall of Fame as a designated hitter. Seven-time All-Star, five-time Silver Slugger, two-time batting title. What, what more can you say? I mean, uh, over 2,000 hits, 309 home runs, a 312 batting average, uh, 1,261 uh, runs uh, batted in I mean the guy was amazing and you know what he played he played his entire career in Seattle still helps out uh, the team uh, in Seattle helps players out okay th th this guy uh, 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 epitomizes uh, Seattle and and it's definitely worthy of being on Goat Mountain. Okay, so there is uh, a, a baseball player worthy of going up on um, Goat Mountain for Seattle. Uh, let's look at uh, another one. Okay, uh, Felix Hernandez, Cy Young winner, a six time All Star, and two time ERA title. Uh, overall, 169 wins, an ERA for the career of th 3.42, uh, strikeouts 2,524. The guy was amazing, right? Again, somebody, again, who was recognized as being the best at their position, okay? Uh, again, he's, he is a player. It's a shame that uh the team around him for his entire career was not uh you know on the level that he was so that you know they they never they were never able to get more wins for him because if if they had uh it would not even be close uh right i mean you you would have to put felix uh on the mountain over over Russell. I mean, the only thing that Russell has is the fact that he was the quarterback for the Super Bowl winning team. That's his biggest argument. Okay. But again, um, playing most of his career in Seattle, being so dominant, I would put Felix over uh, Russell Wilson. Uh, let's, let's, get to, let's get to some football. Okay. There's some football players that uh, potentially uh, could be uh, over Russell Wilson. On, on the mountain. Let's start with uh, Steve Largen, Hall of Famer, seven-time Pro Bowler. He made the All-Pro team uh, for uh, All-Decade teams. Uh, he was named to the 1980s All-Decade team. 
and he is also a Walter Payton Award winner uh, in 1988. Uh, 819 receptions, 13,089 yards, 16 yards <laughs> for reception, 100 touchdowns, okay? Great career, Steve Largent. Uh, again, uh, and again, somebody who spent their entire career in Seattle. So it seems like it's a much better fit. We all know that, uh, you know, uh, Russell wanted to leave Seattle. So it just seems fitting to me more that, uh, the players that we have mentioned here have either so far have either played their entire career in Seattle or wanted to be in Seattle their entire career. Uh, but you know, in the case of Felix, they just, they were ready to move on. So they, uh, they, they let him go. Now, uh, let's talk some other players, but you know, potentially they also didn't play their entire careers in Seattle, but, uh, the years that they put in Seattle, I, I think you can make an argument for, uh, next one we have is Marshawn Lynch, five-time Pro Bowler, also made an all-pro team. He obviously is a Super Bowl champion as well. And yes, there's uh, all-decade teams. There's all-decade teams for the 2010s because the 2010s are over. Who was named on it? Marshawn Lynch. Russell Wilson was not. Uh, and Marshawn Lynch, again, you can say that, yeah, Russell Wilson was the quarterback of the Super Bowl winning team, but who was the heart and soul of that team? Marshawn Lynch. Uh, well documented by many players who were on that team. Uh, and they still talk about it. Uh, th that alone, uh, to me, uh, would uh, qualify Marshawn Lynch over Russell Wilson. Let's get to our next one. Uh, again, somebody who, you know, uh, before we, we move on, actually, Marshawn Lynch, again, yeah, he didn't play a lot of years in Seattle, but the years that he played in Seattle were so amazing that he'd be somebody, uh, and, you know, and he led the team uh, to a Super Bowl. So it, it's kind of hard uh, to not consider him uh, for, for Go Mountain. Now, somebody who has been all but one year in Seattle, Bobby Wagner, who is a eight-time Pro Bowl, uh, eight-time uh, Pro Bowler, a six-time, six-time All-Pro, uh, All-Pro uh, player, and obviously Super Bowl champion, and also named to the 2010 All-Decade team. Again. With Russell Wilson not making the all-decade team who and other players who are on that same team making the all-decade team, that just tells you those players were seen as better players. And come on, uh, Bobby Wagner, his career's not even over. He's got 29 and a half sacks. He's got 900 solo tackles. And I imagine, uh, you know, by the end of this year, he's... It's, it's it's uh you know a high chance that he uh he's got uh over a thousand uh, and his career is not over yet uh and i you know he, he's somebody is he's going to be a surefire hall of famer i would put him uh on goat mountain over russell wilson let's get to another one Richard Sherman, five-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro player, obviously a Super Bowl champion, and also, now we're three players in a row who are on that same team, all named to the uh, All-Decade team for the 2010s. Three, three players in a row, all on that same team, who were named to that all uh all decade team when Marcel Wilson was not, but they were not considered to be uh, worthy of Goat Mountain over Russell Wilson. 37 interceptions, three touchdowns. We, we all know 
the moments that Richard Sherman has had uh, making big plays for the Seahawks. So, I mean, you know, go go watch the games. People people don't throw at Richard Sherman, and there was a reason. And, you know, again, he was a guy that, you know, really was a big part of the personality of that team. And I think that is a bigger reason to put on uh, the Goat Mountain for that Super Bowl win over Russell Wilson because he was not the personality of that team. Okay, and now let's take a look at the next person, also from that same team, who also... Uh, had a bigger uh, part of the personality of that team. Seven-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro player, obviously Super Bowl champion, and also made the 2010 All-Decade team. Earl Thomas. 30 interceptions, two touchdowns. I mean, again, it, somebody who uh, teams feared over the middle. Uh because he was so fast, he could make up so much ground. He's, uh, again, getting interceptions. Uh, he's, uh, you know, for uh, a smaller guy, uh, he was blasting through people. It was just uh, ridiculous to watch this guy play and how good uh, he was. Okay. Uh, again, just... To me, when I think of the Super Bowl winning team, I think of defense first. The second thing I'm thinking of, Marshawn Lynch. The third thing I think of is Russell Wilson and the magical plays he could make and did make. And the, you know, the come from behind wins, the game winning drives, the end of games, uh, Yes, that was all amazing, but when I think of that team, that's the third thing I think of. So if you're the third thing I think of uh, from your own team, I don't think that qualifies you for Goat Mountain. Okay, and now that's just uh, talking that specific team. Uh, let's talk some other players who are also worthy of being considered for Goat Mountain. Uh, another Seahawk great that we have to talk about. We're still talking football players here. Cortez Kennedy, Hall of Famer, okay? Eight-time Pro Bowl player, three-time All-Pro player, made the 90s All-Decade team. He was the 1992 Defensive Player of the Year. 58 sacks for the career, 500... 569 to, uh, solo tackles and 11 forced fumbles for his career and then remember that 1992 team th that he won the defensive player of the year for that was the year that they were like what they only won two games right i mean ey, <laughs> they were two and 14 and still had somebody named player of the year that has to tell you how great of a player he was the Seahawks of the nineties. I mean, this is when, you know, my friends and family who are Seahawks fans, were calling them the sea chickens, right? I mean, th that's how bad, that's how bad it was. Even people who were fans of the team were making fun of their team because they weren't good. I mean, if, if you're, you know, from Seattle, you know Seattle was not ever a football team uh, city first. Uh, it's become more of that way because of the success that the Seahawks have had over uh, recent years, but that's not the way it was before. And yet still, during that decade, we had Cortez Kennedy, uh, who was uh, one of the best players of all time. So, uh, again, because of the lack of success of the team overall, um, I think that is why he's not, wasn't considered, uh, for the, uh, the, 
the Goat Mountain by the Sporting News, but I think he should be considered. Uh, the next one that should be considered for the uh, Goat Mountain, Walter Jones, Hall of Famer, nine-time Pro Bowler, four-time All-Pro player, and also made the All-Decade team for the 2000s. So there you go. He pl And here's somebody else who also had 180 games and started all 180. 80 games somebody who also spent all of his career in seattle so uh you know somebody you got to consider i mean he's uh offensive tackle uh but just because of how great he was he deserves to be considered um but most people uh you know, most people are are casual fans. They they don't really know what they're watching on the field, so they don't understand the level of how great a player like Walter Walter Jones is. Because uh, when they, you know, I'm somebody who gets excited about watching uh, line play, offensive line and defensive line. I get excited about watching it. Uh, a lot of people when they're watching uh, football games on TV. Uh, they don't even notice that the, <laughs> that they're on the field until uh, a mistake is made by offensive linemen, or if they're watching the, they don't notice the defensive line unless they're making a like a huge uh, tackle for loss or a sack, right? So, uh, you know, a lot of times the the players that play on the line they're overlooked, uh, but uh, to me that's where games are won or lost they're won and lost in the trenches by those offensive and defensive linemen and walter jones is one of the best offensive linemen of all time so yeah he needs to be considered for a gold mountain uh let's talk another one that we should consider for goat mountain another player that maybe uh isn't that well liked uh in seattle um by Seattle fans, uh, somebody that I was never uh, that big of a fan of myself. I loved that he was making success with the team, but uh, just something about him <laughs> didn't, you know, the personality, the the giving up, uh, giving himself up, running out of bounds, not going for extra yards. Sean Alexander, you know, he was. Again, listen to the list of accomplishments. Three-time Pro Bowler, an All-Pro player, uh, a 2005 MVP, uh, made the All-Decade team for the 2000s, uh, Player of the Year, or Offensive Player of the Year, uh, Burt Bell Award. Uh, award. Uh, um, yeah, a list of accomplishments, a uh, way... Again, we, we went over Russell Wilson's list of uh, accomplishments that are recognized, right? Just real short uh, when you're comparing him to a lot of other players uh, that have played in Seattle and played, uh, you know, just as long or some of them lo longer careers uh, in Seattle, right? And uh, for Sean Alexander here, you know, uh, 9,453 rushing yards for a career, 4.3 yards uh, per attempt, 100 touchdowns. Uh, we all know that he set uh, the record for touchdowns by running back in a single season. It got broke the next year, but hey, he, he set it. So yeah, pretty amazing. Uh, obviously won an MVP, so he received MVP votes, uh, which Russell Wilson never has received one. So, again, it's hard for me when you see players like this with uh, and the other players that we've mentioned and their list of accomplishments that um, you can't say that they go that they belong over um, Russell Wilson. But okay, we've talked some we've talked some football here. We've talked a little bit of baseball. Let's get to some basketball because there's some basketball players that deserve to be talked about for the Goat Mountain because uh, we don't have a, uh, a basketball player on Goat Mountain. 
Uh, but we got to talk about some. Gary Payton, Hall of Famer, nine-time All-Star. Um, he was a nine-time All-NBA team, 1990-91 All-Rookie team, nine-time All-Defensive player, 95-96 Defensive Player of the Year. He was named to the NBA 75th Anniversary team. Uh, he won a championship with Miami, so he's got a list of accomplishments, okay? Uh, most of them, he obviously didn't win the championship here, but most of his accomplishments come uh, in in Seattle. Uh, so uh, you gotta, you gotta uh, mention Gary Payton Sr. for Go Mountain. Uh, and to me, the personality, again, Russell Wilson was just too uh, robotic uh, in his answers uh, to really, you know, be the personality of a city. I mean, look how easily he transitioned to another city and does the same robotic thing that he did here. He's not the personality of a city. Um, Gary Payton, uh, you know, he, he was the personality for that team that the the city took on while watching this team so i would say that he should be uh considered for jack for um go mountain more so than uh than russell wilson okay and let's talk another player because uh we got to mention Jack Sigma, who is a Hall of Famer, a seven-time All-Star, uh, was on the 1977-78 All-Rookie Team, uh, 1981-82 All-Defensive Team, and 1979 NBA Champion Jack Sigma, who uh, helped and led uh, Seattle across any sport get their first championship. It was Jack Sigma. Okay, so uh, if Russell Wilson is simply getting uh, the consideration and getting the spot on Goat Mountain because he was the uh, quarterback of a Super Bowl winning team, you have to say Jack Sigma should be considered because he's, uh, you know, the the leader, the center, the power forward of the 1979 NBA champions. The, the you know the player that brought a championship to this city for the first time so jack sigma should be on there over russell wilson and then let's talk one more player here that is lauren jackson hall of famer three-time mvp seven-time all-star two-time wnba champion uh yeah i mean 46 field goal percentage uh 35.1 percent from three um again just just the list here of accomplishments it's not long but still longer than russell wilson's so yeah, there's a lot of players that have played in Seattle that considered and should be in that GOAT spot over Russell Wilson to me. Um, before I give my final uh, decision who which one of these players I'm putting on uh, GOAT Mountain, uh, make sure you leave it in the comments. Who do you... Uh, Put in Russell Wilson's place on Gold Mountain. Or if you want to leave it in the comments, maybe you have a different idea. Maybe you are still taking somebody off of Gold Mountain. Uh, let me know. Who are you taking off of Gold Mountain and who are you replacing them with? Or maybe you look at this Gold Mountain and you say, nope, they made the perfect list. Leave it as it is. Let me know in the comments down below if you're watching this on YouTube. You know, or, you know, if you're just listening to the podcast and you want to reach out and still want to let me know, uh, is email me seattle sports show at gmail.com uh now who do i think should be 
on Goat Mountain over Russell Wilson. I really went back and forth on this one a lot. It was it was a tough tough decision. There was it came down basically to um like three uh different people uh that I that I thought it should be. But to me, if I have to replace somebody on the Goat Mountain uh, over Russell Wilson, it it has to be. It has to be, to me, uh, and I know it makes a really, really uh, lopsided <laughs> with baseball players, but you got to put in Edgar Martinez. I mean, he set a precedent, right? First time in Major League Baseball history for a designated hitter to get into the Hall of Fame. Um, again, seven-time All-Star, five-time Silver Slugger, uh, had the batting title two times, and we went over his career numbers that were obviously all uh, amazing, you know, not just not just um, city of Seattle, amazing, but overall like across all players of all teams, Hall of Fame, amazing. So I got to put him in right now. That's who I am putting in place of Russell Wilson. So um, it's close, though. I like I said, uh, it was close. The other player that I wanted to put on almost wanted to put on but not quite there yet we'll see uh again could add to his numbers this year uh and uh maybe we'll be replacing edgar martinez uh with uh bobby wagner to me bobby wagner uh again he has spent most of his career in seattle wanted to be in seattle even the year they left, it just, you know, business decisions didn't work out. Has a list, uh, longer, longer list of accomplishments than Russell Wilson. Uh, has great career numbers. Was the, you know, he's the quarterback of the defense, right? He's playing, that's the position he's playing. He was playing middle linebacker. That's the quarterback of the defense. So there's uh, a, 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 a huge argument to make that Bobby Wagner should be the one on there. And then uh, the other player I almost put on there was Marshawn Lynch. And again, just because uh, if we're talking about that Super Bowl and bringing that first Super Bowl win to Seattle, Marshawn Lynch, again, it's said by coaches, it's said by teammates, he was the heart and soul of that team uh and you know the accomplishments he has plus being the personality of that team uh he'd be the other one i would consider but again uh the reason why he wasn't as close to me uh as edgar martinez and bobby wagner just because his time spent in seattle is so much shorter i mean he was what one two three four five and a half seasons uh in Seattle, just it's hard for me to say that. Um, again, somebody who was on those teams with him, Bobby Wagner, who's got um, again the same amount of accomplishments plus that I, I would have to say Bobby Wagner deserves it over. And like I said, Bobby Wagner, uh, by the end of his career, uh, whether he decides just to play one more year or uh, maybe he decides to play a couple more years here in Seattle. We'll see what ends up happening. But yes, he um, he very well could be by the end of next year. I, I might be saying, yes, we need to replace Edgar Martinez with uh, Bobby Wagner. So there you go. That is my Go Mountain, Ken Griffey Jr., Ichiro Suzuki, 
Edgar Martinez and Sue Bird. Yes, it does make it baseball heavy, but that's that's the facts. That's 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 the goats that we've had uh, in Seattle. Most of them have uh, come uh, come out of baseball. All right, so I mean, and that with that, and that's without <laughs> uh, you know ever even making an appearance into the World Series at this point. Hopefully, uh, the Mariners will make a uh, change to that this year and get us to the World Series and then hopefully win it. Uh, we shall see. But um, yeah, there we go. There's Goat Mountain. Again, let me know what you think of it. Uh, let me know what your Goat Mountain is for the city of Seattle. Uh, that is going to be the episode for today. Okay, so if you're listening to this, please, uh, I would love if you hit the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button to the channel, make sure you share it with your friends and family, uh, and then, uh, yeah, just uh, comment and let me know uh, what, you, what you think uh, about the Mariners uh, being in first place right now. Uh, let me know about Go Mountain. Uh, let me know what is your final prediction before we get into the regular season here. What is your final prediction for the Seahawks record uh, going into this season? All right. And then, of course, if you want to play fantasy football, uh, hit me up and let me know. But that's the episode. Uh, thanks for listening to the Seattle Sports Show where we watch legends awaken and breathe fire. So take cover because with a sea of sound, you will see us rise to reign supreme and win forever.